here at Rosie and Maple Syrup. Today I want to walk you through a process for flushing out your RO after you've had it in storage all off season and getting all the preservative out or uh, doing an initial flushing if you've got new membranes or it's the new RO build. Um, we have city water here, so we've got a little bit of chlorine in our water. Uh, depending upon where you live, you can actually have uh, up to three or four parts per million in your chlorine, which is pretty high. I think that's uh, what the FDA allows. So we're going to do a, an initial test to see what ours actually reads, and then we are going to be using this carbon block filter from uh, Membrane Solutions. Uh, that was provided to us. Uh, we're going to test that, see what our chlorine level is after we're running it through a carbon block filter. And then we're going to actually use that uh, to remove the chlorine and flush our RO out from last season as well as a new RO that we built. Um, we're also going to do a, a little pH test on the one that's got the preservative in it, see what our initial baseline is when we first start flushing. Uh, we want to see that that goes to neutral uh, by the end of our flush there as well. So we'll, we'll start out with testing our uh, actual water source and then we'll uh, run some water through one of these carbon filters, see what that is, and then we'll also run some through uh, our preserved RO and see what our results are there and then we'll check everything at the end of our flush. Okay, we've got our city water source here. We're going to check both the pH and to see how much free chlorine we have, um, how many parts per million we've got in it. Uh, we'll start with our, our litmus paper here, a pH test. Uh, we'll just dip it in, pull it out. Um, as you can see, it is definitely uh, very neutral, so uh, very much as expected. Okay, we're going to use our test strip in our tap water to check our chlorine level. Okay, so we do have a small trace of chlorine. Um, looks like about 0.5, maybe, maybe 1. Okay, whether this is a brand new RO build that you're flushing brand new membranes or uh, an RO that you're bringing out of storage that you've had preservative in over the off season, uh, this procedure will basically be the same. So you're going to take your, your sediment filter housing, you're going to put your carbon block filter in there, uh, you're going to install that. Back onto your filter housing here, you're going to snug that up. And then I'm going to show you another tip because you're going to want to flush uh, this carbon filter for about 10 minutes first before you actually start running any of that through uh, your membranes. Okay, once you've got your carbon filter in your housing, I want you to look and see which direction you've got your flow going. And off the output line, I want you to find the first fitting and disconnect that. Okay, and the reason why is we're going to take an um, extra piece of tubing connect that so that we're not going through our membranes initially and we're just going to reject that water off you know into a sink uh, we're going to run that for about 10 minutes and then we're going to stop and then we're going to reconnect this and actually start our membrane flush okay so we've got that hooked up we're just about ready to go you just want to make sure both your permeate and your concentrate lines are also flushing off into your sink uh, so that way you can just, or your drain, so you can just reject all that. Uh, and again, 10 minutes, and then we're going to run um, probably for about two hours fresh water through here and get hopefully a couple hundred gallons uh, through this thing and rinse it all out. And at the end of that, we will check our uh, chlorine as well as our pH. Okay, we're filling up a five-gallon bucket here with tap water. We're going to use this to run through to flush our carbon block filter before we actually get started flushing the RO membranes out. We just got our uh, output coming out right down here. We'll get a glass of that water and do a chemical test on it as well to see if our um, chlorine parts per million are a little lower. And then we just got <clears throat> um, intake going into this bucket. Uh, we'll, we'll probably run about 10-15 minutes, it may be more than 5 gallons through, 
uh, and then we'll switch this plumbing back over, hook that back up, and actually start the flush. Okay, we've got this full. We just did a little bit of uh, pressure relief just to make sure we didn't have any air trapping. And you can see we've got um, flow coming out down there. So we'll let this run for, like I said, about 10 minutes. And then um, we will do the chemical test. Okay, we've got our water sample from the carbon filter, flushed water. We're just going to dip in and take a look. And it looks completely white, which is good. So uh, don't see that slight hue of purple. It might be hard for the camera to pick up on the, the, the prior test trip, but um, to the naked eye, this is much more pure white versus a slight lavender uh, hue to it. So it looks like we're effectively at zero ppm for chlorine, which is a good sign. So we can go ahead and finish rinsing our membranes. Okay, so once you've got this hooked back together so you're not just putting the water out through the carbon block filter and rejecting it and done, done rinsing it and you actually want to start the flush, hook this back together, turn it on and, and start it up. Now uh, you're going to want to go through at least 100 gallons of water and you can figure out how to do that quantity of water a couple different ways. Um, one way is I just keep running the tap water into a five gallon bucket and taking right out of the five gallon bucket on the intake, running it through this and just flushing both the permeate and the, the concentrate lines out into the drain. Uh, and then just let that run for an hour or two. You're gonna get over 100 gallons through the, the system like that. Or with this still disconnected and going out, you can fill up a tank of a known volume and use that as the water to then flush through your system. So uh, for example, I've got a 180 gallon tank and two 65 gallon barrels. I could run the water through the carbon block filter, fill those up, then reattach this, and I could put in a regular sediment filter to do this flush. But either way, you wanna flush it with a, a high volume of water and check your pH at the end if you're uh, rinsing out the preservative, should be neutral. If they're brand new membranes, you just need to flush it. You don't need to check it and it should be fine. This is our original RO unit and we are doing the flush with the carbon block filter in there. Now we get a heavy run of saps. We're gonna use two uh, ROs in parallel. We got the first one running already and we're just uh, Flushing out new membranes here from Membrane Solutions using that carbon block filter from Membrane Solutions with our municipal tap water that we had previously tested. And we're going to run this for about an hour, uh, maybe a little more to make sure we've got everything flushed out. And I'll show you the concept. We're just filling a bucket with water while we suck off the bottom there into the RO. And we just kind of keep that at steady state, let that run for an hour, and have it all flushed out, and then we're all set for the season. Okay, overall extremely happy with the performance of these carbon block filters from Membrane Solutions. Uh, you can buy a, a multi-pack, a six-pack, or individual ones. Uh, they worked really great for making sure we don't have any chlorine in the water. We can do our membrane flush at the beginning of the season, or if you've got new membranes. So, I uh, highly recommend them, worked great, really happy with them, great price point. And uh, you can find a link below in the comments to purchase these um, if you're interested. And please be sure to like and subscribe to the video. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.